Hey, what's up everyone? This is Silver Slayer. Thank you for tuning into this video. Precious metals have a unique potential. They have opportunity that no other investment has from its intrinsic value, but also from the supply and demand side. Since you need to dig silver and gold out of the ground to accumulate more, it puts a barrier on the supply or the production side, especially silver. You see a lot of miners focusing on gold because gold is more profitable. Silver is found by accident, basically found from byproduct when they're digging up gold, lead, or zinc. So there's a diminishing silver supply. Over the last seven years, they've been cutting back silver production by the hundreds of millions of ounces, and this is going to come into a very big danger zone since the demand for silver is skyrocketing, especially in 5G technology, electric vehicles, so on and so forth. So this article is going to be explaining some silver demand, you know, numbers, what's happening in the world of precious metals, more specifically silver, and where we're headed. This is going to be great insight on the future of silver, and I definitely think you will enjoy this video. So before we start, make sure to smash the like button. Let's see if this video can get 200 likes. Everyone like this video right now the link to this article will be in the description and with that said let's jump into it so delayed 5g network rollout weighs on silver demand the rollout of a global 5g network was expected to boost electrical demand for silver this year silver stands to benefit from the growth of 5g infrastructure and devices owing to its use in electrical contacts such as semiconductors and multi-layer ceramic capacitors electrical and Electronic EE applications are the largest end use for silver, accounting for 24% of the total physical demand, 248 million ounces in 2018. However, EE, or electrical and electronic, demand has fallen by 50 million ounces since its peak in 2011, and 5G was expected to partially offset this decline in 2020. The year 2020 was heralded as the year of 5G. Owing to coverage, rollout, and availability of devices, 5G is the fifth generation of mobile network technology, offering greater connectivity, reliability, and capacity. Shipments of 5G smartphones were expected to surge 696% to 231 million units this year from 29 million units in 2019. However, Disruption to manufacturing and global supply chains owing to the impact of this virus, as well as the consumer's willingness or lack thereof, to spend money in the current economic climate casts doubt on the year's forecast. Lockdowns across the world have placed unprecedented strain on networks owing to the millions of people now working remotely. Operators have been forced to prioritize increasing capacity of existing network, which has ironically temporarily deflected the investment away from 5G this year. Penetration of 5G technology and the increased silver demand is likely to fall short of projections this year. That's because simply because of the virus. So, however, silver is a critical metal in the electrical components that will enable 5G technology, so demand will be sustained in the long term. See, the short term for silver isn't looking too bullish it's more the medium and the long term where the real potential is so in addition to the anticipated rise in 5g smartphones and infrastructure the rollout of 5g is expected to massively expand in the internet of things the iot cap capability and industrial digestization such as virtual reality autonomous driving and robotics chinese or china's three major telecommunication carriers have pledged to accelerate their investment into 5g in response to the government's call for new infrastructure projects that can boost economic activity in the aftermath of this virus pandemic so you can see the use for 5g or the use for silver right here smartphones is heavy use so the green is heavy use so very high in smartphones common use in virtual reality uh in initial use in smart cities energy and utility monitoring is common use autonomous vehicles common use drones common use industrial automation initial use so now let's go into gold so Gold ETFs had record inflows in the year to date. Gold backed ETFs added 4 million ounces in May, taking inflows for January to May to 18 million ounces. This exceeds the highest level of annual inflows seen in 2009. The ECB has just announced that it intends to almost double the size of the pandemic emergency purchase program to 1,350 billion euros, assuming that the German Constitutional Court 
recent ruling does not ultimately impede this, governments and central banks are throwing considerable sums of money at the problem. This news has been seen as positive by stock markets despite a bleak economic outlook, with the S&P 500 surging almost 40% and the DAX up over 50% from their March lows. In the U.S., a surprisingly large jump into employment in May added to the rally in stocks while safe haven gold fell below $1,700 an ounce. There is still significant uncertainty about how the, ec- how the economy recover, will recover and play out while the disappointments could support the gold price. So here's silver. Silver held its ground against gold last week, despite the sell-off. While prices were rising from the March low, silver outperformed gold. I just made a video about this earlier today. Go check it out. But should prices continue to fall, gold will most likely resume its outperformance. Pandora to phase out all mined silver from its supply by 2025. Pandora, the world's largest jeweler by volume, aims to use only recycled silver and gold in its products by 2025 from 71% today in order to reduce its carbon emissions. Pandora's jewelry uses around 340 tons, 12 million ounces of silver annually. Recycling accounted for 16% of the global silver silver supply last year at 169 million ounces compared to 836 million ounces from mining sources. Uh, Silver recycling volumes are forecast to remain flat this year, although the recent price rally after the low in March may spur some price-sensitive jewelry and silverware recycling in emerging markets. So, that's definitely interesting. So, that's definitely really interesting uh, to think about because silver is used for so many different things and and you really got to think about the future of silver. See, a lot of gold is recycled, remelted, reused, re-scrapped because it's profitable to do that. People go through their, their jewelry drawers, people, you know, pawn their, 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 even their wedding rings, their earrings, whatever the case is, if there's gold in it. People are the people even take apart computers and laptops and, and scrap the gold out of it, but and it, because it's profitable to do so. But silver, on the other hand, isn't as profitable because it's so much cheaper. So a lot of silver is lost in technology; it's thrown away. When when you have a new when you have the iPhone, they're going to throw away the iPhone. Laptops they get thrown away, not scrapping the silver out of it. So a lot of silver is lost in technology, while a lot of gold. It's recycled from technology. So even though it comes out of the ground roughly 8 to 1, it's much smaller than that. So now let's jump into platinum. De-dieselization has led to increased emissions in Europe, but policymakers are pushing EVs to meet CO2 targets. Average CO2 emissions from the new cars and vans registered in the EU and UK and Iceland rose for a second consecutive year in 2018. Emissions rose to 120 grams or CO2 uh, to up to 2 grams from the 2Gs from the previous year. The increase in average emissions was caused by mainly the continuing shift away from fuel efficient diesels to pet- petrol vehicles, particularly heavier SUVs. The market share of diesel cars in Western Europe has shrunk from 46% in the first quarter of 2017 to just 29% in the first quarter of 2020. This has led to a loss of nearly 450 uh, 450 kil- uh, kilograms of platinum demand over the last three years, almost a third of the market's size. CO2 emissions targets in the in the EU this year are capped at 95 grams per kilometer. Automakers will need to cut emissions by 27% from 2018 levels to avoid large fines. In the wake of this virus, planned auto stimulus programs in the EU are now heavily geared towards low emission cars. The German government has increased uh, subsidized for batteries, electric, electric and hybrid vehicles, but excluded traditional internet combustion engines uh, vehicles from any incentives. Despite diesel's low emissions, uh, subsidies are likely to push consumers to favor electrified vehicles this year. The shrinking market share of diesel cars in Western Europe has been and continued to be the main driver of declining automobile platinum demand. Platinum's poor fundamental outlook is expected to weigh on the price. So, that's definitely something you got to think about, right? What metal is used for and where is that product going in the future? It looks like platinum isn't going to be needed as much as we go into an electric vehicle phase, but silver will be. So that's definitely bullish for silver, but not so for platinum. So here's, here's palladium. Full throttle for China's auto industry. Vehicle sales in China are estimated to have risen by a further 11.7% in May, according to provisional data from the China Association of Automobile Manufacturers, with sales rising to 2.14 million units. 
This marked the second consecutive month of sales growth after 21 months of decline. The rebound in China's auto market after the country's lockdown was lifted and has been stronger than anticipated. But demand is expected to wane in the second half of the year as the world's largest auto industry faces significant headwinds from a global recession. China is the single largest auto catalyst market for palladium, accounting for around 21% of demand last year. 2.3 million ounces. Despite China's strong recovery, the palladium price is yet to recover to pre-pandemic levels, but is down 4.6% in year to date. There is a risk of further downside this year if the key auto markets, such as the U.S. and a lesser extent Europe, fail to recover as well as the expected year. So, definitely interesting. Diversity is definitely key, but you can see how some precious metals have more potential than others, like platinum and palladium, which could be declining but gold and silver could be inclining or rising. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, but it's definitely looking bullish for gold and silver. I'm curious what all metals you invest into, whether you do invest in the platinum a little bit, gold a little bit, copper maybe. You know, I'm, I'm curious what you invest into and why. More importantly, why explaining, maybe you could shed some light on a different angle, a different perspective, a different opinion that someone may not have thought of. And you could help someone out in the comments. So I invest in the gold and silver, mainly silver, uh, I invest probably uh, probably like 10% of my stack is gold. Uh, I might try to up that, but right now I'm focusing on silver. Diversifying in gold is definitely beneficial. You know, you can hold a lot of gold in a small area where you can't do that with silver. So there is some benefits to gold, unlike silver, but not many. Silver is definitely uh, the more uh, poten the highly uh, potential metal. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. The link to this article will be in the description if you can check it out yourself. Also, go check out the other video today. I talked about how silver is better than gold, how there's more potential in silver than gold. Thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.